Hello, I'm Allison Silverberg, the former mayor of Alexandria, Virginia, and I am honored to host a new series called Conversations with Allison, which is being produced by the Zebra Press. And on behalf of um, the show, my thanks to Mary Wadlin and everyone associated with the Zebra Press. Um, our first conversation will be with Mrs. Lillian Stanton Patterson, one of our Alexandria living legends. I want to extend a heartfelt welcome to Mrs. Lillian Stanton Patterson, lifelong Alexandrian, and we are so honored that you are here with us to the, uh, today. So, and we are here in the Watson Room, the Watson Reading Room, uh, which is part of our Black History Alexandria Museum. Black History Museum. Right. Yes. So that's terrific. Mm -hmm. And you, you work here. I do. I. I was here, I came here in 92, and uh, I eventually became one of the curators, and I retired as one of the curators several years ago, and here I am back again. Oh, I'm not back as a curator, but it's a wonderful place to work. Right. Yeah. When I went to Parker Gray, that area was clear. And we, we, when we would have fire drills, that's where we ran to, went to all that vacant space there. That's interesting. So that was sort of some park or open space? Just open space. And this building was two little houses. And uh, then they bought, the city bought these two little houses and created the Watson Reading Room. So I went to the second grade in this half, mm -hmm. and oh. one of the volunteers that we had went to the third grade in the other half. Well, Changed a lot over here. So well, all these books, uh, it's a tremendous collection of books here and in this room. Practically all of these books have been donated. Uh, we haven't bought many books, but they've been donated. So uh, if people wanted to donate some books, that are related to the African-American experience, this would be a good place to do so? Uh, yes. So uh, you would welcome those? But the director has to look at them and make sure that they fit the mission. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a non-lending research library. Okay. So we don't want any fiction. Right, just all non-fiction mm -hmm. and a person would have to do the research here and they can't take it with them. You wouldn't not want to yet. lose, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I'm not sure whether we're going to come to a day when we do let the books go out of here. We may, but right now it's non-lending. And then next door at the Alexandria Black History Museum, uh, there's um, there are various exhibits that come through and you're very involved with that and all the lectures and events that you all mm -hmm. have. Our director, um, Audrey Davis, selects the exhibits, you know, mm -hmm. and she creates the program for the museum. Well, do you, did you want to add anything else? Well, I'd like to share about the Alexandria Black History Museum. Okay. It's a, it's one of those best kept secrets in Alexandria. But since I'm talking now, it's not secret, so people <laughs> need to come out and visit us and see the exhibits that we have. We have a permanent exhibit that stays for several years, and then we have changing exhibits. We always have a program going on, and this coming Saturday we're going to have uh, storytelling for little historians. Little historians oh. are three to six years old. Oh, that's great. Uh, but this is a great little museum and our reading room here is, is it's really good for research. People have done that. We also have an obituary file. The obituary file is made mm -hmm. up of funeral programs and what you can find from an obituary is a lineage. So if you wanna, want to start looking, this is a good place to come to start looking and 
find names that you can begin to research and then go to other places. So we've got a lot in this little place. And it's all connected. I mean, uh, history and uh -huh. the times in which we live, and it's all connected. We're owned and operated by the city of Alexandria under the Office of Historic Alexandria along with the other museums. Right. So. And the new addition of the Freedom House. Yeah. Um, so that's good. So. Right. Alexandria Black History Museum is a good place to come. I love that. I agree. <laughs> well, we'll talk about uh, where we are sitting in the city. I mean, we are sitting really right across the street from the Charles Houston Rec Center mm -hmm. um, in the Watson Reading Room. Um, and this neighborhood is very familiar to you, but if we can go back in time first okay. and come back forward to the present, because I think y as a lifelong Alexandrian and all that you've seen, and um, I know that it's, it's important to share our history, uh, but it's also important to know how you think we're doing as a community and where you would like to see us um, uh, pursue to go. So all, all of that. Well, this neighborhood now is called the Parker Gray District. But when I was growing up and lived down in this area, this was called the Uptown area. And Parker Gray School was directly across the street from us. Uh, it had elementary and high school, so I went there for elementary. Uh, while I was in school, uh, it became so overcrowded that they uh, converted an old silk factory on the south side of Alexandria, and they named it uh, Lyle's Crouch. I see. So from the fifth, sixth, seventh grades, uh, we went to Lyle's Crouch, and then we came back to Parker Gray for high school, and high school was 8, 9, 10, and 11 in the state of Virginia at that time. So I went to Parker Gray and graduated from there in uh, 1944. Uh, almost the you end. You do of the math. That's not my long suit. That's all right. <laughs> no, no. But uh, the neighborhood uh, is completely different from what it was. Um, it was a predominantly African-American community. Uh, and there were always white people mixed in the community. But it was predominantly African-American. And now, when I walk around the streets and look, I see all these other people like, where did you come from? Because <laughs> we have moved out and other people have moved in. So the neighborhood has evolved, but back in the day when you were a child growing up here and going to school here, our s city schools were segregated. And completely. then completely. And the Parker Gray School that you attended, which was across the street from where we're sitting, it's now the Charles Houston Rec Center. But, but, but the Parker Gray, or was... But well, actually what happened, uh, Parker Gray Elementary and High School became overcrowded. So in 1950, they built another school uh, a few blocks away. Right. And they took the high school out of that school and the name with it, Parker Gray. Uh -huh. And then they renamed this one Charles Houston because Charles Houston was one of the persons who came to Alexandria to help get equal opportunities and equal education for African Americans. He was the dean of the School of Law at Howard University at the time. Okay, so I didn't know that. When he, uh, so when, when they named the school after him, uh, that was because he had just passed. He passed two or three months before the new Parker Gray opened. Uh, the old Parker Gray became Charles Houston, and it stayed that way until probably the early 70s, and then it closed completely because the children were sent to the school down on Cameron Street, which was called Jefferson. But here again, we were losing another name, 
and after a while they changed the name to Jefferson Houston. Uh, and that's where all of the children from Parker Gray, although Charles Houston went. Charles Houston one night burned down and oh. we don't know how. So eventually the city built a recreation uh, center on that same site. It's a great and they summer. kept the name Charles Houston. Well, it's a wonderful rec center, actually. It absolutely is. And we have a wonderful well, display about African Americans who've made a difference in our community mm -hmm. uh, as you walk in those doors, as you know. Um, so that's very informative for yeah. our residents. But it's what well, you're. Well, this, this is the second Charles Houston building. Right. Because the first one they tore down and they built this state of the art. By the same token, the neighborhood changed completely because all around Charles Houston was public housing. But uh, with the state of the art, new Charles Houston and the public housing changed to what we have over there now, which is not public housing, not really affordable. Well, that's a whole conversation we'll have in, in a second, but let's go back to, for one second to segregation. Mm -hmm. um, Ferdinand Day discussed with me about, and others who um, remembered, um, so, um, and I've heard your, one of your quotes is that you never got one new school book. All of the school books were hand-me-downs and had been written in or torn pages. Missing pages were older books. Correct. And so the children who attended this segregated school, um, uh, it was really hard to get a good education, and the city didn't, and Ferdinand Day told me that he had to finish his um, high school training, I believe, in D.C.? Well, yes. When Parker Gray began, it only went to the eighth grade. So you had some choices. Were you going to stop there or go someplace else? So many students went to D.C. Uh, of course, they had to lie about where they lived. And they also had to get there every day. And they took the bus every day. Now, my mother did not go to school in D.C. Uh, you know, throughout the South, there were colleges uh, erected for in each state for African Americans and many of these were teaching colleges and they also had a place for the teachers to practice so she went to Virginia State that's what it's called and there was a Virginia normal then uh, she went to high school there and stayed to college which was different from going to D.C. to college, uh, to uh, high school. Was that common? So I'm not sure what year that would have been that your mom uh, went well, to college. Let me see. But was that common that an African-American uh, woman would, at, at that time, given the barriers, wasn't that an amazing, um, I mean, achievement? It was a little different. It was an achievement that, so, so you grew up, your father was a pastor who's prominent and he's known in the community, uh, uh, speaking out about issues, encouraging community, um, helping people in all ways that a pastor does. And he was at Ebenezer Baptist Church? Mm -hmm. And then he was at? He went to Orange, Virginia, and he was pastor at Nazareth Baptist Church for f 50 years. Okay. 50 years. So so here you have your, your father, you're the oldest of seven children. Yeah. And you, uh, age gap from from the oldest to the youngest is about 10 years, you 10 told me? 10 years, mm-hmm. And, and they, um, if I might ask, are, are you comfortable sharing what year you were born? No, that's okay. <laughs> I know, it's all right. 1927. Just, okay, so 1927, um, and then right after you're born is the uh, crash of the stock market. The country is plunged into incredible depression, the Great mm -hmm. Depression, 
incredible poverty, one in four Americans unemployed, um, the war, World War II. I mean, there's a lot going on in your childhood. And yet, and here's your father, this prominent pastor, um, your mom's a teacher, and then, and then you... My mom, my mother taught, yeah. Then she uh, started having her own little school, so she oh. stopped teaching. By that, I mean her seven children. Okay. So she made sure that all of you valued education, but also studied, and I mean, she was sort of shepherding you all, like, 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 like most moms, right? Yeah. Like you've done with your two. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, uh, but but it is hard to imagine today, as we sit here today in 2020, that um, the fact that that our city uh, not only had segregated schools, but didn't ensure that you all, that you and your age group had an equal opportunity at a great education, by virtue of the fact that. Um, in terms of school books, in terms of supplies? Well, let me say this. Uh, even though Parker Gray began with just elementary school, eventually it added uh, the complete high school so that by the time I got to high school age, mm -hmm. I didn't have to go out of town. We went to high school right here in the city. I understand, but it's because Mr. Day but was we did, older but than we you. Did, yeah, he is. He, he was. was, yeah. But uh, the books and the equipment, they were used, hand-me-downs. They got rid of the, got new stuff. We got their old things. You got the hand-me-downs is what I, mm -hmm. right? So We got the hand-me-downs. And it's the same, same way with uh, the landscaping. Uh, you build a white school and you have beautiful landscaping, you build a black school, if you build one, uh, the parents get together and, and make it pretty. Right. Uh, the teachers spend a lot more of their partial salary because they didn't get the same salary. So the teachers at y'all's school didn't get the same salary as the no, teachers at the white a, school? No, they got a lower salary. Uh, than they did in the white know. schools. It's just terrible. So uh, they would use some of their money to buy equipment, and then we had active parent teachers associations that would help with things that needed to, that students needed. So I'm curious, how did that make you feel in your heart? Well, when let me you say think this. about, did you ever feel like? You learn, you learn what you live, and in that, you don't really know a difference. Uh -huh. you, you know, you don't pay attention to the same kind of difference as a child that an adult would. Right, you're just, you're a child. Yes. You live in your, you're playing with your siblings and friends in the right. street and all so that. So, you don't. You don't pay that much attention. You, you, you know there's a separation. You know that uh, you pass kids going to school, but... Uh, okay. And then you went off, you went on to college mm -hmm. and also some uh, graduate coursework as well, as yeah. I read, at American University and mm -hmm. somewhere else. UVA. I, UVA, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, um, and your master's is in social work, and your bachelor's degree was in social, social studies. studies. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 